How confident you are for your exams or for my overall? That's right, boys. Then my then my can take that one. 
You are aware, no, how many months for your exam? No, 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 no. I am not able to see them. You're not cheating me, you're cheating yourself, my dear. Just to again make you realize not not quite a lot of time left for your exam. ICC syllabus is huge. How many subjects, subjects to actually do the best? Minimum five. Total subjects, how many? Primary subjects, how many? Main subjects, how many? Six, 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 six. Main subjects, six. Usmeh. Actually, six may be the best to do it. If I put five, then I'll do it again. So, five months, five subjects, huge portion, not enough. And some of your performances are still not satisfactory. One minute I'm spending to say this, so that you guys have a little bit of seriousness. Some of you are yet to wake up. Some of you are yet to wake up. एक चीज जो अभी भी मिसिंग है इन दिस बैच इज इंटरेक्शन अर्ज टू लर्न एंड डाउट्स या जो भी है नथिंग नथिंग हैज कम अप सो फार सी दैट यू आर एबल टू डू मच मच बेटर सो उसके लिए द मेथड्स यू नो ऑलवेज आई कीप ऑन टेलिंग अदर टीचर्स आल्सो मस्ट बी टेलिंग यू ये जो एक एक मिनट का काउंसलिंग इफ यू टेक इट सीरियसली यू कैन डू मच बेटर so, okay, we stopped with leukocytes. So now, when we are talking about corpuscles, we talk about corpuscles. Now for corpuscles, we must have finished with RBCs. Uh, I'll give you questions to uh, write once I do the uh, corpuscles there. So corpuscles, we already learned what is the major characteristics of corpuscles. Why are they termed corpuscles? They are not well developed cells. They are not well developed cells. They do not undergo the process of division, and they don't have quite a large number of characteristics as regular cells of the body. As already for the RBCs, RBCs we had studied, no, that they don't have the mitochondria. They don't have the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi, nucleus, like that. So you will answer this question safely. WBCs we must have uh, just started. What are some of the features of WBCs? They are known as leukocytes because they are colorless. Do they have any particular type of a pigment? No, no they just don't. They have uh, no uh, pigment like RBCs. What about their nuclear structures? Nucleus, their nucleus are basically low. I must have shown you the figure the other day, the images the other day. How do uh, nucleus of uh, RBCs look like? Uh, when I talk about their types, when I talk about the types of uh, WBCs, WBCs are majorly of uh, five types. Now, let us really understand their uh, types and their functions also at the same time. When I'm talking about uh, the two major categories of WBCs, which are the two major categories, one is known as granular leukocytes or granulocytes. Granular leukocytes or granulocytes. Now, if I draw one type of a, a granular leukocyte or granulocyte, I should be somehow uh, drawing one. I should be somehow drawing this way where blood sheds. So, now when we are talking about a particular type of a, a granular leukocyte, if I'm talking about the granular leukocyte, should somehow 
uh, look like this, where the nucleus is lobed this way, remember. The nucleus is lobed this way. This is the nuclear part that I'm talking about. And what about the cytoplasmic region? The cytoplasmic region will have prominent granules like this. Granular leukocytes, which are the granular leukocytes you are supposed to understand. Neutrophils, we talk about the basophils, and we talk about the eosinophils. So, three types of granular leukocytes. What did I say? Why are they termed as such? They have characteristics granules in there. Granules are basically proteins actually that they have in their cytoplasm. And the nucleus is majorly lobed nucleus, two to three lobes. Sometimes two, sometimes three, and sometimes it can be an irregular lobe also from time to time. This is the first category, remember. I said granulocytes as one type, and what is the other type? A granulocytes as the other. But if I have to draw a structure of the A granulocyte, how should the cell look like? The cell may look either a, a big a nucleus this way, or it may be a centralized nucleus, something like this. But am I drawing any granular substances, proteins in the cytoplasm? Should I draw? No, I should not draw anything because uh, they may be having the cytoplasmic proteins, but no characteristic proteins which take up stains. When we try preparing <coughs> smear, blood smear. Then which are those A granulocytes that we are talking about? The A granulocytes that we are talking about are monocytes. And very, very important, lymphocytes, monocytes and lymphocytes, okay? So now, uh, what are the five types of WBCs that you know? The names are very important for you here to understand. What are the five types of WBCs that you know? The five types of WBCs, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes, lymphocytes. Now, Basically, when I have to write down the function of the WBCs overall, it's a function of the WBC that I write overall. Uh, the function of the WBC that I write overall is defense of the body. Now we are going to also come across that defense of the body can be uh, in two ways. Defense of the body can be in two ways. Uh, where we are going to understand that a particular WBC can uh, undergo the process of engulfing and eating away the germ in whole, or uh, just by releasing certain defensive chemicals. So based on that, the defense. So we are going to learn this way. So first of all, let us learn some primary features of each of these types of cells. When I'm talking about the neutrophils, when I talk about the neutrophils, these are the maximum number of cells so far. Uh, these are the maximum number of cells that are present in a uh, smear of uh, this leuco uh, in a blood smear in the total amount of the, leu uh, the leukocytes. When I'm talking about the total count of the leukocytes, if I just say first of all the total count, what is the total count of the leukocytes to understand? The total count of the leukocytes is something like this uh, 4,000 to 9,000 cells per cubic millimeter of blood. Roughly around 4,000 to 9,000 cells per uh, cubic millimeter of blood. Uh, does it differ uh, in the male and the female as we were talking about the RBCs? No, it is more or less the same, unless and until we are talking about some disease condition, infection, etc. What about the origin? I'll come to this concept again when a uh, little bit of this is uh, discussed. Origin, what about the origin when we are talking about? Uh, majorly, we are talking about bone marrow, the same thing that we have talked about for RBC also. And now that I'm talking about WBCs, I should also be talking about something known as lymph nodes. Uh, what are lymph nodes? Now, you know the word lymph. Lymph is a secondary body fluid that we have. And uh, lymph vessels, kya hai? Lymph vessels are the tubes through which the lymph would flow. And these lymph vessels, when I see, the lymph vessels are a little bit swollen at certain region, little bit swollen, they are like that, no? So the blood vessel will all go smooth. But the lymph vessels are not like that. The lymph vessel will be a little bit swollen, little bit swollen, little bit swollen, that way. So this swollen regions are what are called lymph nodes. Jahabe WBC banta hai. Do the blood cells divide? Never. Blood cells don't divide. Never. None of these blood cells they divide. So we are talking about origin bone marrow hai and uh, uh, lymph nodes. Okay. Now we come back to this concept that if I'm talking about the count as 4,000 to 9,000 cells per uh, cubic millimeter of blood, out of this count, which is the maximum number of cells? I said maximum number of cells are neutrophils in any particular count. Maximum number of cells are the neutrophils. 
And what are some of the basic characteristics? They are three low. And uh, what type of dyes you uh, should be using when you want to try, uh, try making a smear? Now, I will talk about this word smear. What is the meaning of the word blood smear? I take a glass slide, I take a drop of uh, blood at one end, and I smear it. I just run that drop of blood, dry it, uh, and then uh, stain it, and then observe under the microscope. But when I stain it, if I want to you, if I want to see the neutrophils, then I have to use a different stain. If I want to you uh, see the basophils, then the stain is different. If I want to see the uh, eosinophils, then the stain is different. The same stain I cannot see all the three types of cell prominent. Based on what type of granules, the type of stains. At the same time, the nuclear region will be stained by some colors, some dyes, and the cytoplasm by some. So these are some of the concepts I can talk about. So neutrophils for you, from exam point of view, this is very, very important. Name the type of blood cells, lymphocytes, maximally present in the blood. Answer is neutrophils. What are the characteristics I already told you? Let us talk about the basophils. Basophils. Look at that figure as I speak. Look at that figure as I speak. <laughs> basophils. I'll show you that image after that. Now, the basophils that I talk about, what are the basic characteristics of the basophils? How many lobes they are? This is the important to differentiate. Karna hai. Basophils, how many lobes they are? Basically, basically, <laughs> indistinct. Basically, they are not, you will not be able to count either two or three. Indistinct, basically, and basophils. Eosinophils, distinctly two, make most of the time, distinctly two lobes. So that's a major feature that we have to understand. Now, I said for uh, observing the neutrophils in the sphere, I have to use a neutral dye. Neutral dye. What is the meaning of the word dyes when I talk about dyes? Means a particular stain in the biological preparation, you must have used something or the other. Stains that you talk about. No, there is saffronin, there is acetocarmine, there is uh, methylene blue, there is a uh, yosin, so many stains we use for making preparations. So, composition based on what type of chemical components, some are acidic, some are neutral, some are basic. So, if I'm talking about neutrophils by the term itself, neutral dyes used by that. Underline that in your book. Neutral dyes used hota hai to observe neutrophils. Basophils, basic dyes. Eosinophils, acidic dyes, acidic dyes. So these are just one one mark questions that you are asked. Now let us uh, talk about some uh, features of the monocytes. So when I say uh, monocytes, where actually we understand that these monocytes are types of cells which are comparatively much bigger also. Uh, and the nucleus, if you look into quite prominent, quite a number of times these monocytes are supposed to have nucleus, something like kidney bean shaped, and uh, sometimes uh, filling up the entire space of the cell with a, a small rim of cytoplasm left. So what is the difference in the dis uh, nucleus between these two types of cells? These type of cells majorly has got nucleus almost filling up the cell. And now that I draw the lymphocytes, lymphocytes also two types. This is the smaller lymphocytes I talk about. Uh, larger lymphocytes, they have got also a bigger nucleus. And this type of cells, if I'm talking about majorly low nucleus. Now, Monocytes comparatively a feature that you have to remember monocytes are comparatively larger cells to understand. Now let us try to understand the most important part that is the functional aspect. How do they carry out their functions? So what I said, if it is a lymphocyte, if it is a lymphocyte, what type of functions they would undergo? What type of functions they would undergo? They would undergo functions by, uh, they would undergo defense by two methods. What are the two methods? Either they undergo a process known as phagocytosis or they undergo release of different chemical substances. Chemical substances, something like uh, antitoxins, uh, chemical substances, something like antitoxins, and chemical substances, something like uh, antibodies. So these are some of the uh, common uh, chemical substances that you'll have to remember. Antitoxins, antibodies, these are chemical substances which are released. Now let us try to match with this. If I'm talking about neutrophils, they are basically phagocytic. If I'm talking about neutrophils, they basically show the method of phagocytosis. If I'm talking about monocytes, they show the process of phagocytosis. Clear? So when I'm talking about name the type of WBCs which show the process of defense by phagocytosis, can I answer? 
Neutrophils and monocytes both. Neutrophils and monocytes both show the method of phagocytosis. Now, what is the what is the meaning of phagocytosis? Cell eating, engulfing the germ, engulfing the germ or the pathogen, something like the amoebas. So now, if I'm talking about that concept also, say suppose now this is a blood vessel. This is a blood vessel. Uh, this is a blood capillary that I talk about. And this capillary later in the chapter, you're going to come across if it is a capillary, the capillary wall is supposed to have small pores known as the capillary pores. <laughs> the capillary pores. Now, if this is an RBC here, if this is an RBC, last time also I must have told you, if this is an RBC here, the RBC may get stuck. But if I'm talking about the WBC, uh, the WBC with its low nuclear, the WBC can change its shape and it can come out of the circulation. Uh, did we understand what is the definition? This definition or this process by which the WBC can come out through the capillary wall, this process is known as diaphagesis. This particular process is known as diaphagesis. Take a note of this one. What is diaphagesis? Write down the definition. What is diaphagesis? This definition is very, very important in the different section you get, different section you get. What is diaphagesis? The coming out of the squeezing out of the WBC by changing its shape. And how will you justify that the WBC can come out of the RBC? No, because the RBC is not smaller than the WBC. Because it is an evolved. The WBCs are an evolved. They can change, change shapes. And now that they enter into the cell, what are they going? Uh, what, what are they doing uh, there in the tissues? Now that they come out of the capillary and reach the tissue, what are they supposed to do there? Undergo the process of phagocytosis. So, which type of WBCs will majorly undergo the process of diabetes? Neutrophils and monocytes, because they are the ones which are phagocytic, and the rest which are actually to release chemicals, they need not come out and they would remain in the circulation and they can release those chemical substances. So what type of cells are releasing chemicals? The most important to remember, lymphocytes. The most important lymphocytes and they release a special type of chemical substance known as antibodies. And antibodies, now the concept of antibodies, something of the other you must have already learned in these two years. What are antibodies, the special chemical substances? That are always meant for the defense, for the defense, for the immunity. Well, I'm getting the, the squeezing out of the WBCs. Uh, the squeezing out of the WBCs through the capillary wall. Through the capillary pores, through the capillary wall to reach the site of infection. To reach the site of infection. So if the definition must be there. Check for one. Simply there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes,
and antitoxins will only be able to destroy the toxic substances that enters our body or are produced inside the body by the variety of uh, pathogens. So say something like, if I ask you, uh, something like a poisonous insect bites us and all the toxins en enter our blood, and the toxins are there in the blood. At that time, which type of chemical substance is going to give us defense, uh, protect, yeah, the, the protection, is it the antitoxins or the antibody antitoxins. antitoxins at that time? But the virus enters uh, or the bacteria is entering at that time, it is the role of the antibody. At that time, the antitoxins cannot do. So that's the basic difference that you understand. Ye five types of cells and some of these properties, first of all, to understand. Now that I talk about, go back to this concept again, number. When I talk about the number, uh, this is the average number that we are talking about, the, uh, that we as humans should be always having. Uh, under what condition does normally uh, WBC count increase it? And decreases. So if I if I talk no, that's the abnormal count I'm talking about. Like uh, RBCs, also I discussed first of all that normally kafi uh, When does it go up? When does it come down? But if it ultimately if the uh, uh, rise and the uh, decreases only for a short period of time, then we don't consider that as an abnormal count. But when will it be considered as an abnormal count? When it is persistent for a long time. When it is persistent for a long time, then it is an abnormal count. Then uh, what do we understand for our uh, WBC is also is, is it something like this that sometimes it may rise, sometimes it may, it may fall. When should it rise? Sometimes or when does it rise? Virus or something. Whenever there's a, a infection. Whenever there's an infection in our body, uh, is, if say suppose we go through our blood test and we come across that the number of eosinophils very high, number of basophils very high, we very much understand that there's a major infection in the body. And uh, if I'm talking about that, if uh, you know, the number of WBC decreases, why should it decrease? Again, because of some uh, accidents and surgeries, et cetera, et cetera, not because of infection, but because of profuse loss of the body, yes, the number of WBC may decrease. But now I'm talking about abnormal increase and abnormal decrease, where there is a persistent low number or a persistent high number. So what are those two conditions known as? Those two conditions are known as uh, abnormal increase and decrease if I'm talking about the abnormal count if I talk about the first one to understand is uh, leukopenia that's one and then we talk about the leukemia as the other <coughs> leukopenia is the abnormal decrease leukemia is the abnormal increase okay so this is about the WBC that you have to talk about next is we look into platelets when we are talking about platelets, also known as thrombocytes, what are some of the features? Platelets, also known as thrombocytes. Uh, some features are same like RBCs, if I talk about that these type of cells also, uh, they don't have nucleus. And in fact, they are also known as cell fragments. They are not well-developed cells also, if I talk about the platelets. Uh, they don't have nucleus. They are also... Uh, enucleated, but uh, same like that, uh, the, the RBCs, when uh, they are getting formed in the bone marrow, the nucleus does uh, remain, but as in when they are uh, uh, reaching maturity, these type of cells start losing their nucleus. What are those precursor cells called? The precursor cells are called megakaryocytes also when we are talking about the types of cells which from which the mature cells are formed and they, they possess a nucleus and the mature ones before released into the bloodstream they lose their nucleus where are they formed they are also formed in the bone marrow they are also formed in the bone marrow what about their number if you have to uh, talk about their normal count uh, the normal count is roughly around two to four lakh of these cells per cubic millimeter of blood, roughly around two to four lakhs of these cells. Now, what else? One special feature, function that you have to study about uh, these type of cells are uh, these type of cells releases special type of enzymes which help in a process known as clotting, coagulation of blood. So that's the major function that you have to write. What is the function of the blood platelets? Yeah. Because the blood platelets have got some other, yes, tell me anything. Megakaryocytes are the precursor cells. Uh, 
uh, the, what to say, these are the young cells which are getting formed in the bone marrow. These are not the, uh, the um, mature cells, they're not the mature cells. Before the maturity, the precursor cells. So this for RBC or platelet? This is basically for all the three types, mega karyocytes. When you talk about mega erythroblasts also are there, you know, leukoblasts are also there. So when we are talking about function, is we can ignore here one major property, one major function that we have to write down is coagulation or clotting, coagulation or clotting of blood. So when I'm talking about what is the need for coagulation, when does coagulation happen, within what particular period of time should coagulation happen? Now, if I give you some one or two instances, uh, something or the other, you must have gone for a blood test. Now that the blood has been taken up from a vein and a puncture has been done on the skin, so there's a small puncture which has happened on the skin and inside the blood uh, vessel, and then the blood is taken up. And you must have observed that the small drops of blood now starts coming up. Uh, within the, how long should this oozing out of the blood stop normally? What do you think? What do you know? No, quite long, quite long. One a few seconds when you burn one chair normally. Now that we are talking about Kabi the Kabi the blood test nahi kiya. Yeah. Yeah. Parents ko nahi dekha kabhi. Yeah. Yeah. Kya kar raha hai? Nature. Nature to kya wish kar now, next is, I said that when should coagulation happen, when it should not happen. First thing, try to understand, as I said, whenever there's an injury, you are uh, in the process of playing and running, you uh, fall down, and there's a big injury. Even when there's an injury, say, suppose now I'm uh, working in my kitchen and there's a uh, cut with my knife. Normally, how long should it take? Understand until the injury is too big. How long should it take to stop the process of oozing out of the blood? Few seconds to just a couple of minutes. That's normal. But if it keeps on bleeding, now if I talk about the puncturing of the skin for uh, taking blood, or I talk about a small cut, or I talk about an injury also falling down, even at that time also, the process of clotting should start within minutes, few minutes. Does it happen for everybody that the clotting of uh, that the process of clotting starts within a few minutes? Exceptions are there. If I talk about person suffering from a condition known as hemophilia, you have studied this in the other chapter, a genetics one. So when we are talking about hemophilia, what is hemophilia? It's a condition where even you talk about the puncturing of the skin for taking blood, you talk about a small cut, or you talk about during the brushing of the teeth or the small amount of blood that may come out uh, from the bleeding gums. That also normally by the time we take two, three sips of uh, water, it stops. But no, that does not happen if I'm talking about these uh, people. Uh, these individuals are uh, showing a profuse loss of blood even from these minor cuts. So that's a different condition. You have to remember that's a genetic disorder. Hemophilia is a genetic disorder, which is because of the deficiency of or a very, very low count of uh, thrombocytes and other different uh, uh, you know, proteins in the blood. So this is just the word that we have to remember. I'm not going into the details of it. Now, since we are talking about platelets and uh, clotting, let us try to understand that how exactly the process of clotting happens. Should the process of clotting happen inside the body? No, again, the process of clotting should not happen inside the body. And our blood already has so many different types of chemicals, which are known as anticoagulants, which are known as anticoagulants. What are these? Anticoagulants are proteins again, which are already present in the plasma, which does not allow the clotting happen inside our blood vessels, inside the body. But yes, when the oozing of the blood is happening at some uh, open wounds cut on the skin, at the time the clotting should happen. So, what are the steps of clotting? Let us try understanding process of coagulation of blood, process of clotting of the blood. That is what we try to understand now. So. Clotting of the blood, again, we try to understand is a sequence of chemical reactions. We are studying just the basic skeletal reactions. Remember, it's a long sequence of reactions, actually. What are the 
steps, process of blood clotting. The process of blood clotting and what are some of the steps that we have to talk about? At the site of injury, at the site of injury, what will happen? The platelets, the platelets, they will start releasing a particular type of an enzyme. Platelets are releasing a particular type of an enzyme and the platelets will be releasing what? They start releasing a particular type of an enzyme and this is known as thrombokinase. There are quite a number of alternative names, at least two, three you should know. Uh, thrombokinase, also known as thromboplastin and also these are uh, this uh, uh, stored stored blood factor, uh, stored factor, factor 10. Uh, once, once, one student has stored little factor. <laughs> stored little, they can get a stored little factor in here. Little layers, stored factor 10 it is. So now, when we are talking about this, the thrombo, these two terms are enough for you to understand. Now, even if you don't write that factor 10, all these blood clotting factors, there are more than 12 blood clotting factors in the plasma. So, this is Roman 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 12 numbers. Here we are talking about just some. What is this? Now that we are talking about thrombokinase, where is this thrombokinase released? In the plasma, the react where is this reaction happening? This reaction that happening in the plasma, the reaction that happening in the plasma at the site of injury. Now that thrombo uh, this thrombokinase is present in the plasma, another set of reactions will start getting activated. What is that reaction that is getting activated? Prothrombin. Now, what is prothrombin? Prothrombin is another protein that is present in the plasma. Prothrombin is another protein which is present in the plasma. All of you will write down this cascade exactly like this. Tanmay, dear, why are you looking at uh, the patient smiling? <laughs> Notebook, Nikalo, Liko, Yakul, three marks, Kiri, Ayaga, paper. You have to write it exactly this way. Prothrombin. Now, prothrombin is inactive form. This is the inactive form. Prothrombin is an inactive protein. Where is prothrombin protein present? Plasma. And because of the thrombokinase, prothrombin gets converted to thrombin. And this is the active form. This is the active form. And now that thrombin is present, so now when we are talking about thrombin, this thrombin, now that it is present, this will result in the conversion of fibrinogen. What is fibrinogen? What is protein of the fibrinogen is the protein of the plasma. And this fibrinogen, which is in the soluble form, gets converted into insoluble form, and that is known as fibrin. Fibrin, insoluble form. And at this side, the RBCs are trapped. The trapped RBCs and fibrin result in the formation of soft clot first, and then results in the formation of hard clot. So that is the process that you have to write. Okay. Platelets give us arrow releasing a protein known as thrombokinase. TH, ROM, BO, KINASE, thrombokinase also known as thromboplastin. And this type of reactions are called cascade reactions. Just may 
एक स्टेप के साथ दूसरा स्टेप का एक्टिवेशन इज एसोसिएटेड वन आफ्टर दी अदर प्रोथ्रोम्बिन गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड टू थ्रोम्बिन एंड फाइब्रिनोजन गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड टू फाइब्रिन now at this side what's happening at this side if i talk about that this is a blood vessel at this side this entire reaction is happening at this side this entire reaction is happening and this entire mass that is getting formed the entire mass that is getting formed this is what you understand as clot the entire mass that will get formed because an injury had happened here earlier the blood vessels got torn the skin got torn at this uh, side and this entire process has happened here the process of clotting has happened here now if i look back into the blood plasma which type of the protein is majorly used up this type of protein no now if i look back at the plasma which type of protein is majorly used up fibrinogen has been majorly used up no what are the other proteins in the plasma i told you plasma has got proteins like fibrinogen and globulins and three three proteins which are there in the plasma which are those ha huh? proton bola do na mujhe to aise kuch na diya globulin globulin chalo tab main ke baad albumin albumin globulin fibrinogen तो अभी एट दिस साइट ऑफ इंजरी लुक हियर एट दिस साइट ऑफ इंजरी अभी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द सॉफ्ट क्लॉट इज गेटिंग फॉर इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ क्लॉटिंग ओवर नो एट दिस स्टेज हाउ डू द सॉफ्ट क्लॉट लुक लाइक समथिंग लाइक अ ब्राउन पील दैट गेट्स ऑन द कॉर्नर ऑन द स्किन फॉर नाउ इफ यू हैपन टू पील ऑफ यू गेट टू सी सम येलोइश फ्लूइड कमिंग आउट नो सम येलोइश फ्लूइड लाइट येलोइश कलर फ्लूइड कमिंग आउट व्हाट इज दैट एट द फर्स्ट साइट ऑफ इंजरी when clot that is not passed that is what most of you write in the paper serum that is what is called serum now at the site of clotting at the site of injury when the process of clotting is happening you get questions when the clot is immature the fluid oozing out is what what is the fluid oozing out it is serum it is not passed it is serum passed is when when the process of clotting is taking a long time and the dead dwcs are all getting accumulated and you get a creamish colored uh, yellowish or creamish colored fluid oozing out and the process of clotting is not happening it's taking a long time because there's an additional infection that has happened because of the wbc accumulation at that time it is pus but normal agar clotting ho raha hai there will be no pus formation so never to write that word and here you have to write the yellowish fluid releasing out is serum why what is the definition of that word serum why can't we say that it is plasma it is not plasma because if check the composition fibrinogen is massively absent there fibrinogen is deficient there why deficient because the process of clotting has used up the process of uh, the protein fibrinogen is this concept clear so in this entire concept of clotting first of all this how to write step wise you should know as it is it comes in the paper or uh, filling up the missing words that comes and then certain questions application questions based on this concept clotting now next is we try to also understand that if i'm talking about if i'm talking about the characteristics of blood next what we are also trying to understand something known as blood groups since we are studying corpuscles since we are studying composition of the blood something more that we have to understand relating to this is blood groups what is the basic concept of blood groups what are we actually trying to understand blood groups means what what is the meaning of blood groups we are talking about a certain type of substances that we individual have in our plasma as well as on the surface of the rbcs so these are the two things that we are trying to understand so when we are talking about blood groups what is the meaning of this blood groups how can people or how can human be categorized based on blood groups here for blood groups we are trying to understand two specific properties presence of certain components in the plasma and presence of certain components in the surface of rbcs and uh, what is present basically we are actually talking about the presence of certain proteins in either locations 
we are trying to understand presence of certain proteins here also and presence of certain proteins here also so something like again if i talk about that this is the blood stream that i understand and this is uh, these are some rbcs that i understand here i'm saying the plasma should have certain type of antibodies these are the antibodies where should the antibodies be the antibodies are supposed to be there on the plasma the plasma should have certain type of antibodies so we can always match antibodies with the plasma what are antibodies proteins dissolved in the plasma antibodies are proteins dissolved in the plasma in addition what are we trying to understand in addition now we are trying to understand that yes on the surface of the rbcs there are certain antigens on the surface of the rbcs there will be certain antigens and this two things this two parameters are going to judge i want to decide what type of blood groups we have so what are the four types of blood groups that we have we talk about blood group a we talk about blood group a we talk about blood group b we talk about blood group ab and we talk about blood group o so these are the four blood groups that we have human can be categorized just a minute और दस रुपए बाई बना पर हाँ उसके बाद क्या बिकाने में जाके समोसा खाने का समोसा रोटी सब्जी Blood group. All of you know your blood group. Yes. Yes. What is it, young man? So, what is it? Yes. 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 Yes.
try to remember what are the parameters that we have for each and every bravo and plasma and serum are different patients. Plasma or serum. Plasma has all the different type of salts and ions and the three major proteins. I, that's why I told you also repeatedly. Mm -hmm. huh. And another point. Yeah. Another point. When you're talking about the other different points, so many different types of salts are there. Or major point, if you have to write, ek to have a fibrinogen ka point in Golikna. Plasma has fibrinogen large quantities, serum, fibrinogen absent. Next is uh, plasma contains variety of different antibodies, different antibodies for infection or for prevention, immunity. Uh, serum does not have any such antibodies. Serum does not have any antibodies. So chemical parameters got differences in. Salt, ions may differences in. Okay. Achha, now salts and ions are here. Here calcium should be there. Here, calcium should be there, vitamin K should be there. Please add this. Please add this. You get questions in your paper, I missed this up. Uh, ions and salts are here. So when I talk about this, you get questions. Name the mineral element necessary for the process of clotting. I'm seeing 2 plus. Yes, 2 plus. Yes, 2 plus. Yes, 2 plus. Same here. अगर बायोलॉजी में अगर ये प्लस प्लस और टू प्लस नहीं भी लिखोगे तो भी चलेगा बट कैल्शियम आइंस कैल्शियम आइंस सी ए टू प्लस है कैल्शियम एंड विटामिन के नेम द विटामिन एसेसिव फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ क्लोटिंग सो नाउ रिमेम्बर दैट सो हियर व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस when I talk about blood group A, people with blood group A, let us try to understand now what is there in their plasma and what type of antigens do they have on their RBC. So we are going to differentiate this way, the plasma and the RBC. I start with blood group A. Blood group A, what type of antigens do they have on the surface of RBC? I'm talking about the word antigen. Here I am talking about the word antigen. What is antigens? Antigens are a type of proteins present on the surface of RBCs. This is the antigens are also a variety of other different proteins which may enter our body from other sources. So always to understand antigens are also another type of a protein. Now that I talk about this, I am talking about A antigen which means protein present on the surface of RBCs. If I talk about group A, then I have to understand the antibody that they have in the plasma is antibody B. We write it this way also. Or you can also write out the entire word antibody. We lick sakte ho, ya to anti B, we lick sakte ho. Anti B is a more common way of writing. So people having blood group A, what is the antigen that they have on their RBC A? Antibody B. What about people with B? Antigen B and NTA. Antibody always to be written in small letter. People with AB, antigen both A and B and no antibodies. People with O, no antigens and antibody A and antibody B both are present. So, here we are. What do we have? Each of us, when I'm talking about a comparison between the plasma and the surface of the RPCs, now we try to understand that what is the meaning of the word transfusion? And now, can you tell me where, where should a person go for transfusion? Hospital. Achha, hospital. But come, hospital. Transfusion? I, I do not say where should a person go. I said where should a person go? Huh? Transfusion caps. Transfusion, mm -hmm. what is the meaning of transfusion? Transfer of blood. Transfer of blood. So <laughs> transfer of blood, when I'm talking about the word transfusion. <laughs> so now I talk about a donor and I talk about a recipient. Always to understand, the moment I'm talking about transfusion, we are talking about the introduction of blood into the body of a donor. Recipient. 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 
अभी और स्पेसिफिक है अभी और स्पेसिफिक है इफ इट ऑल ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ सर्जरी एंड ट्रांसफ्यूजन इफ इट ऑल ब्लड ग्रुप्स आर नॉट मैच इवन देन दे विल गिव द ब्लड ग्रुप विद अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ एंटीकोआगुलेंट्स एंटीकोआगुलेंट्स टू डिपॉज सो अलोंग विद एंटीकोआगुलेंट्स टू इवन देन a person with negative and positive blood groups also they give because quite a number of times exact the same type of blood not possible in blood banks also so aajkal they give with anticoagulants also they give but it's quite high risk o negative to the red right then get back o negative o negative ha basically our rh negative is comparatively rare as compared to our rh positive now right one question why are people with blood group ab The same concept. Based on this, you are supposed to understand. If I have explained you O, you should be also able to understand A B. Uh, right one question. They give reason why people with blood group A B are known as. Give reason why people with blood group A B are known as universal recipients. Give reason why for that particular. Give reason why people with blood group A B are known as universal recipients. Universal recipients. क्या लिखना है? One only one will answer. सर मैं पता है आंसर. बोलो. Ma'am, uh, they have. Or they don't have. Uh, they have antigen A and B both. They have antigen A and B both. Listen carefully. You write it down in your own words. This was one thing that we understood. Now let me understand this. How is it possible that they can get blood from A also, B also, O also? If they get blood from this, is the proportion of antigen A that is entering and triggering the formation of? Antibody A will it be too much? In that hundred ml of blood, the antigen A entering is little bit. So the process of formation or triggering of antibody also will be little bit. So yes, sometimes it is risky, but still they can. So what are you going to write down? Since the amount of universal recipients, why are they called universal recipients? Because they have Large amount of antigen A and B and no antibodies at all. They have got large volume of antigen A and B and complete absence of antibodies. Corresponding antibodies are nil. Complete absence of antibodies. Large volume of antigens. Complete absence of antibodies. Hence, when they received blood from the donor, when they received blood from the donor. when let me go with when they receive blood from the donor try understanding the donor has small amount of antibody is ke sath iska coagulation chances hai to the bahut agar hoga bhi does not matter the when the uh, when, when they receive, they receive blood from the donor the small quantities of small quantities of respective antigens and antibodies the small quantities of respective antigens and antibodies does not result in profuse clotting small quantities of antigens and antibodies does not result in profuse clotting does not result in profuse clotting so in case you are very clear you can give an example also of your own that these are the two antigen small antibody entering not a problem small amount of antigen entering not a problem but if this person subsequent it is giving blood then of course it's a problem subsequent a transfusion ho raha hai then it is a problem of course it's a problem so you can give him give him the answer it now Next class again we are going to talk about this. We are yet to learn about the concept of RH blood group. This is the first step. Again we are going to talk about all this. Complete the concept of recess RH compatibility. We will continue with this. Confirmation. What is this? Anti-coagulant study. 